strap in should be a good one here from Greenville. This crowd would not intimidate Houston. Every place they go, it's like the circus is in town. So they're used to this atmosphere. Houston dressed in the road black uniforms. East Carolina wearing the home whites. Roberts with the ball, coming off a career-high 26. Throws up the lefty hook, left it short. I think it's important for East Carolina to get some easy baskets. If there is such a thing against Houston. Johnson's three off the mark. East Carolina, they have used 13 different starting lineups this season. They have battled through adversity under first-year head coach Michael Schwartz. Mark in the lane. Offensive rebound. Sasser pulls the trigger for a three, and he cans it. That's what you can't allow to happen. You can't let there be penetration, offensive rebound, open three. Those three things are you cannot let happen. You said at shoot-around today that Houston will blitz you. What do you mean by that? They will try to double the ball screen if it's a shooter, but they play ball screen coverage differently depending on who's coming off. Shot clock in the single. He's right there, they're the trapping it. That's what I'm talking about. That's the blitz. Three on the timer. Johnson, a tough one. And the rebound cleared by Mark for Houston. Johnson's going to be important because he can knock down three-point shots so he can stretch the defense. East Carolina's coaching staff said he was the most important player tonight for them. Sasser knifing in, and he draws the two-shot foul. And, 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 James, what they mean by that is if he can stretch the defense, it opens up driving lanes, it opens up post up. it just gives and stretches the Houston defense. Marcus Sasser at the line. There's a look at Houston coach Kelvin Sampson, the three-time American Coach of the Year. He's one of 16 coaches to ever lead multiple schools to Final Fours. Did it with Oklahoma. He's done it with Houston. And Sasser has all four early for the Cougars. There's no question who's the go-to guy on this Houston team. Everybody understands it. They play off of him. He shares the basketball, but he's the guy that makes the tough shots. East Carolina trying to get on the board. Here's Felton with the rock. Nice pass. Osar blocked, but a foul. And our, a very active freshman will tow the line for the Pirates. See, I think Osar is also going to be very important because of the fact that after you get out of the blitz ball uh, screens, you've got to throw it to somebody inside that can finish. And Osar is going to have to be that guy to finish around the rim. True freshman averaging just a hair under nine points per game. Just a 44% free throw shooter. This has been his Achilles heel. As you see, East Carolina head coach Michael Schwartz in his first season. He's a Rick Barnes disciple. He was at Tennessee the last seven. He was their defensive coordinator the last five years. And he's a heck of a recruiter. And uh, that Rick Barnes tree is tremendous with success. Helped guide Tennessee to the SEC's top scoring defense in 2018, 2021, and 2022. Feathering it in is Jairus Walker. And this young man has really blossomed this year. They knew he was good, but he has really stepped up and played well. Felton gets a clean look in East Carolina. This crowd explodes with that first hoop for the Pirates. And that's what I'm talking about, matching the energy. That's what Felton's going to have to do. He's going to have to knock down some shots and get this crowd even more in a frenzy. He's averaging almost 20 points per game in his last seven. Walker trying to get to the block. Mark with six to shoot. Sasser jabbing, firing, and a miss. Tap out. Offensive rebound, Houston. Floater. No from Sasser, and Felton claims it.
Johnson trailing three. That's where Johnson is really effective. He's effective on the pick and pop. He's effective on the trail. East Carolina's weathered this early storm. They've matched Houston's energy so far. The rebuttal from Sasser. Out of bounds to the Pirates. And James, what I'm telling you is, when you play in a team like Houston, you have to show that you are as tough as they are. You're prepared to be as physical and as aggressive. And that's what they're doing. There you see a knockdown three right there. Pass is deflected. Out of bounds. It'll stay on this end with East Carolina. By East Carolina knocking down some early shots, it really helps their confidence and getting them to get Houston's respect. East Carolina's last in the AAC in field goal percentage at just a little over 40%. But they chart their shot quality, and Coach Schwartz told us that we take, for the most part, pretty good shots. Time run into single digits. Runner stopped. Lead pass Sasser. One on one. Unable to finish. There's Roberts to clean it up. Houston's bigs really do a great job of running the floor. There you see him again trapping the ball screen. They can trap it. They can go underneath of it. They can go over the top of it. Felton halfway down and out. These are the top two offensive rebounding teams in this league. Mark pierces the lane. In some trouble. Shed curls. Then he puts it home. Jamal Shed became just the third sophomore in school history to be named to an NCAA tournament all regional team joining Hakeem Olajuwon and Elvin Hayes. Houston has three perimeter guys that can put the ball on the floor and attack the paint and finish at the rim. Quick hands by Shedd into backcourt. He touched it. Shot clock's at five. Walker has to go to work. A prayer. Barely clips the rim and three bodies in the neighborhood for the Cougars. Walker, long two. Quick hands by Shed and a steal in backcourt. Sasser gives it up to Roberts. Wild shot, and Johnson's able to pull it down. East Carolina wants to run. More quick hands by this Houston defense. Shed might be the best defensive guard in the country. He is unbelievable with his hands and his ball pressure. Sasser step back three, money. And it's all coming off of Shed's defensive effort. Houston coach Kelvin Sampson said the three words to describe his team, tough, together, and talented. Came up with him today on the spot. <laughs> said he's going to call it the three T's. Another block down low. It stays on this end with ECU as we head to a timeout. Uh-oh. Shed is down. It's Sasser. Is that Sasser? It's Sasser. This team is used to playing next man steps up, and so that won't be an issue. It looked like he was putting a little pressure on it, which hopefully is a good sign. Maybe they'll take it back, see if they can retape it, and he'll be ready to go. In his place will be Sharp, who they think is a really, really outstanding shooter. Sasser leaves the game with eight of Houston's 14. Deep in the timer. Johnson has to force. Nicked the rim on the way down. Rebound punched out of bounds. It'll stay on this end. You know, this Houston philosophy is so much about team and winning. We win because everybody makes a contribution. We're not start driven. We're team oriented. And so one guy being out is not going to affect their mentality or their energy level. He told us at shoot around that they have as many as six guys that could lead them in scoring on any given night. Johnson. Osar, and he's clobbered. 
But he's back to the line where he's 0 for 2. But see, when Coach talked to you, Coach Schwartz talked to you about Johnson being so important, that's what he was talking about. Not only can he make that shot, but he can drive and get another player a good shot. Houston scored the first seven. East Carolina the next six. And now it's another 7-0 Houston run. This East Carolina program is in really good hands. Coach Schwartz comes from Tennessee. They built a program there. He was a walker in Texas. And so he understands he's got a win in DNA. So he understands what it takes to be successful. And his energy level is incredible. I'm sure we'll see him the course of the game running up and down the sidelines. Outside of just his energy alone, what else do you like about the way he coaches? His communication with the players. Yeah. I think he got that from Rick Barnes, and uh, so he gets the very best out of them because he talks to them, and they understand him, and he understands them. That last foul was on Emmanuel Sharp, who enters for Sasser. Two free throws for Osar. Corner three mark. Left it short, and the rebound Osar, the freshman, has been all over the place for the Pirates. Wants to take it himself. Blocked at the rim. Cougars on the move. Pick and roll. Cheney plus one. Reggie Cheney headed to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. But that was all created by Shed. Shed's ability to get into the paint, draw the help, and then kick the Cheney. That's, that's the way Houston likes to play. You know, James, they get quality shots every time down the floor. Very seldom do you see Houston have a bad offensive possession. Reggie Cheney is a senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's battled injuries throughout his entire collegiate career, rated as the number three player in the state of Texas out of high school. Does all the dirty work off the bench. Caps off the three-point look. Felton curling. Finger roll. No with the left. Got it back. Follow won't go. Dunk from Debo. No good. Mark bumped. No whistle. Shed will reset for Houston. Walker with eight to shoot. Out to Sharp. Jacks a three. Sputters off. And East Carolina's done a good job so far of keeping Houston off the offensive glass. East Carolina has done a great job of handling Houston's defensive pressure so far. Nice turnaround, but Walker couldn't finish. A wrestling match for the rebound, and Shed's able to cradle it. Shed knifing. And Sharp loses it out of bounds. Seventeen to eight, Houston. Stanford Steve is in the house. <laughs> I think the students would be on board with that. Meet them over at Sup Dogs. East Carolina, two for fourteen from the field, fourteen percent. Houston, second to the nation in field goal percentage defense. What makes them so disruptive? Well, you know, first I think East Carolina is doing a good job with their offense because they're getting the shots that they want and they practice. What Houston is really good at is making you take individual shots. And again, you see Johnson, they double team. They got the ball to Johnson. He can make decisions with the basketball. That's why Coach said he's so valuable in this basketball game. Johnson has five of ECU's ten. Sasser has re-entered the lineup. Back from the locker room. He's got the ball. Gives it up. Cheney can't finish. Tip in will go for Roberts. And I talked about Houston being so unselfish at the beginning. That's what that's the unselfishness offensively that this team has in this DNA. They don't care who scored. They also put a lot of emphasis on finishing at the rim. They were running sprints in practice today for Miss Lamps. 
10 to shoot for ECU. Johnson draws the foul with the head fake. Roberts will pick it up for Houston. Again, what Houston does so well, their guard, Sasha penetrates, gets him in rotation, and winds up and able to get an easy shot missed. But Houston's in position to get an offensive rebound. That's one of the reasons why they do such a great job offensive rebounding, because they make you have to go in rotation because their guards do such a great job penetrating. So nobody has a clear blockout, and they crash the glass. Even though he missed the free throw there, Brandon Johnson's been very active early on for ECU. He came to play tonight. Well, he did, and, and East Carolina are getting the shots that they practice. They haven't been forced to have to go one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what Houston does. They can put so much pressure on you that it takes you out of your offense and makes you then become one-on-one -on -one players, and that's when you're really in trouble. Sasser, water bugging, relocates, soars in, the floater is ready for Marcus Sasser. The other thing that they do is the guards can get so deep because the bigs flatten out on the baseline. Felton's in some trouble. 11 point Houston lead. Felton with eight to shoot, pulls the trigger on a three, it's a round and out. And Felton has started one for three from downtown, lead pass to Roberts. And a Houston timeout to save the possession. Hey, Coach Sampson is asking, why would you throw him the ball in the corner? What is he going to do with it? Oh. Okay. They are loud and rowdy here tonight at Williams Arena. Minji's Coliseum. Houston leads by 11. They came out to see if their Pirates could hang with the number one team in the country. Roberts gets downhill. The big lefty. It pops out. And the rebound, Osar. East Carolina wants to run. Walker. Swallowed up on the inside. Houston has numbers. Sasser fuels the break. Throws it nearly away he got too deep that time I, you have to make your decision earlier as whether or not you're going to shoot it or pass it sometimes you get in so deep and it takes away your passing angle no there you see sasser right there see he, he got too deep he didn't have an angle to pass the ball he was committed really to shooting it Roberts against the freshman. He's terminated his dribble out to Sasser. Nine to shoot. Mark the second. Five, three. Marks loves to shoot the basketball. Uh, he was born to be an offensive scorer. When every time he touches it, there's a red light that goes on, and you have to stop him before he gives it up out of their offensive sets. He's made five of his last seven threes now, dating back to two-plus games ago. Tend to shoot for ECU, roaring in the teardrop, no, from Quentin de Bunger, the sophomore from France, who came with Coach Schwartz from Tennessee. He'll go to the line to shoot two. But yeah, this is what I like about what East Carolina is doing. James, they're playing within the concept and how they practice. They're not going one-on-one. -on -one. They're running their sets. They're getting decent looks. They just have to make some shots. Coming up later tonight at 10 Eastern on ESPN, number 15, St. Mary's takes on number 12, Gonzaga, for the West Coast Conference regular season title. A lot on the line in that one. And to your point, Perry, about East Carolina and just their fight, they call themselves the comeback kids because they've got five double-digit comeback wins this season, five of their 14. Yeah, I mean, they haven't gone away from their game plan, and that's critical. There's a lot of basketball to be played. Sasser already in double figures with 10, and a foul called on the rip through. <laughs> Valentino Pinedo. 
picks up the foul, and the fans can't believe it. That's a, that's a veteran move. And star guard Marcus Sasser headed to the line to shoot three free throws. The foul prior to the break was on East Carolina's Valentino Pinedo. You see Sasser's numbers already in double figures. He sinks the free throw to give him 11. Perry, you said earlier today that when you're playing Houston, it's not about X's and O's. What, what did you mean by that exactly? Well, it's your mental toughness because they keep coming at you relentlessly. And I think East Carolina has stayed offensively with their concepts and tried to play off of their concepts instead of trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, which would have been disastrous. That's why I still I like the way they're playing. Even though they're behind, I like the way that they're playing. Sasser hits all three free throws. He was fouled on a three. He's up to a Baker's dozen 13. East Carolina has it scored in over three minutes. Felton rips through. Can't finish. Here comes Sasser. East Carolina now three for 18 from the floor. The shed just runs the whole show for Houston. I mean, he gets them in their offense. He gets the ball to who needs to have it. Sasser's three around and out. Roberts and his own teammate Francis down there battling for it, and they fumble it out of bounds. The other thing, I mean, Houston's defensive pressure, and it starts with your point guard because he's the guy that meets the ball at half court, keeps the pressure on, and does not give up easy entries. Felton throws it to nobody in particular. That's the first time I thought East Carolina got affected, really, by the Houston pressure. That's only their third turnover. Let's see if Houston can take advantage. Arsenault's checked in for the Cougars. Shot clock at eight for Sasser. Sasser, tough one, blocked. With two on the shot clock, it'll stay on this end. It was last touched by a pirate. East Carolina has done really well against this Houston weave. They like to take their three perimeter guys and go dribble handoff to try to have somebody turn the corner and attack the basket. Sasser has to throw it up. Didn't touch anything. A shot clock violation forced by the East Carolina defense. What do you think about ECU's defense? I mean, Houston's shooting below 40%. I, I, I think it's been good. I, I think where they have broken down is when Shed or Sass has been able to turn the corner and, and penetrate and create rotation. ECU has no points in the paint. A 10 to nothing Houston advantage so far. Team for a three. It's off the mark from the Bunge. It's one and done for ECU. Get pass, wide open, Arsenault's three is way off the mark. Houston now three for nine from downtown. I think Houston has to attack the basket a little bit more. Walker attacks, late whistle, blocking foul on Shed. And East Carolina will head to the line to shoot two. They're just four for eight tonight from the foul line. But there you see the drive. Uh, it really didn't look like with a whole lot of contact. He just kind of faded away. But he's got... Uh, East Carolina has to be able to finish those sort of plays. Walker's first free throw is a brick. Our final Big Monday doubleheader before championship week features a North Carolina team who as of right now is on the wrong side of Joe Lenardi's bubble. Taking on Florida State at 7 Eastern, followed by number 9 Baylor facing Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State fell today to Kansas State. Both games available on ESPN and the app. Florida Back State had a great season. win today. They really did against Miami. I, I, that surprised. Leonard Hamilton's had a rough year, but he's keeping those guys together. North Carolina picked up. A quad one win today as well. They took down Virginia 71 to 63. 
We'll see if that gets them on the right side of the bubble. East Carolina can't make a free throw. They're four for ten from the line. Yeah, they're doing the work. They're just not getting the gravy from it. I mean, they've had some great shot looks. They've had some <laughs> offensive rebounds. They've had some foul shots that they missed. And, uh, I mean, they really have been in a lot of ways impressive, but they just haven't been able to put points on the board. Last foul was issued to Terrence Arsenal. Osar hands both free throws. Whenever you're in a game where all that needs to happen is the ball to go through the basket, and that may sound very simple, you're in a good position because your execution's working, you got the right guy shooting, you just need the ball to go through the basket at a normal rate. And I think that's the situation East Carolina's in. Six to shoot. A hop step from Mark. Throws it up and gets the friendly bounce. Tramon Mark is having quite the half. And that's what Houston's going to have to start to do. Attacking the basket more. Osar puts his head down. Barrels into traffic. Houston on the move. Roberts. Walker. Roberts follows blocked. Walker's there to clean it up. They are relentless on this end. Too big, too strong. Yeah, you can't let them be get that deep. And it happens off the dribble drive, and that's why I've seen how have the Cougars been able to carve out this advantage. I think obviously being on the glass, but relentlessly running their stuff, driving the basketball, and the bigs are really hitting the glass hard. The three-point shooting has not been there so far for Houston. Walker gets swallowed up down low. Kabuje. No attack. And he's held and fouled on the floor. Coach, East Carolina, they don't have a field goal in almost seven minutes. They do not, but they've had good looks. So yes. if I'm coaching East Carolina, I'm continuing to be encouraging. I'm telling us stay with our game plan. Let's continue to attack, and the, hopefully the ball will start to fall for us, and we can go to the line and make some foul shots. They're due for some positive regression. They're three for 21, 14 percent from the field. Bouge can't convert the front end to the one and one. And when I talked about early, it's not about the X and O. It's that mental focus. Making your foul shots, coming up with tough plays, that right now is putting East Carolina in a bad situation. Walker, the future lottery pick, gives it up. Mark spots for three, and he drills it. <laughs> he hasn't seen the shot he hasn't liked, man. I'm telling you, I watched this young man play AAU. And, and you know, they talk about Coach Sampson and how tough and the discipline and all, but he gives good offensive players freedom as long as they take the shots they practice and work on. DeBunge's three is too strong, and Roberts soars in for the rebound. The lead is 20 for the Cougars, the number one team in the country. Their largest of the half. Long two. He's feeling it. That one no good. Quick hands. Osar picks it up. Heads to the basket. Stripped and a foul called on Roberts underneath. See, but that's what Houston wants you to do. Just one on one. That time there was no offensive flow. It was just Ozar with the straight drive. Houston has pushed their team to nothing in favor of Houston. On the flip side, if you're Coach Michael Schwartz in that East Carolina huddle during the timeout, what are you telling your guys for the next three minutes before halftime? James, I am telling you that East Carolina had some good opportunity. They just haven't made shots that were makeable shots. And obviously, Houston inside, they are big, they block shots, but still... They're, they were makeable shots, and they get in the soup a little bit, and now just put more pressure on the East Carolina team. And they haven't made their foul shots. Osar splits the pair. That's been par for the course. They're 7 for 14 as a unit from the strike. Houston back to work on this end. 
Walker bumping, throws it up off balance, almost got it to go. Osar claims another rebound. That's already his sixth. When you're a coach and you're sitting there, you know what teams like to run. If you get them out of what they like to run and going one-on-one, -on -one, you feel defensively you have defeated them. Felton lost it on the way up. Held out by a whistle. This will put him at the line for a pair. He's a 77% marksman from the line. And Coach Sampson right now is giving him a, a clinic on help side defense because he felt his guy came over just like he was taught and shut down the lane. That foul was called on Sasser. It's his first. ABC NBA Sunday Showcase doubleheader starts with the Bucks hosting the Suns at 1 Eastern. And then it's LeBron and the Lakers. They're in Dallas taking on Luka. And Kyrie, that's weird to say, in the Mavs. Coverage tips with NBA countdown at 12.30 Eastern. Last three belong to the Pirates, all from the foul line. Houston number one in the AP Top 25, the net. Ken Palm and BPI, Sasser, Banker, no. Tapped around, and it's cleared by Walker. Felton goes to work. Offensive foul called on R.J. Felton. See, now East Carolina is getting a little bit out of what they want to do. This is what the Houston presser will continue to make you do. Now it's going more one-on-one. -on -one. There you see him driving, Felton driving, offensive foul. Now, they stopped running their system and stopped running their concepts. Now they're just trying to beat you off the dribble. That's not a way you beat this Houston basketball team. That was Sharp that took the charge, the impressive freshman from Tampa, Florida. He's got the ball now out front. Mark, pull up. He slapped and fouled. This will put Tremont Mark at the line for the Cougars, a 75% shooter. Within their team concept, Houston has very good one-on-one -on -one player. Mark is a, is a very good one-on-one -on -one player. Sass is a very good one-on-one -on -one player. Shed's a very good one-on-one -on -one player. But they don't play one-on-one -on -one basketball. They do it within their team system. They average 15 assists per game. Only nine turnovers per contest. I mean, under 10 per game. That's unheard of. That's the three guys that handle the ball are very good with handling the ball. And we haven't even talked about Walker, who's going to be a lot of the So what are they trying to do offensively, Houston? Oh, well, they, they, they can either go with the dribble weave option. They can go with their uh, horns action. Or they can go with the big screening for the guards and then looking to the post stop. And a steal. It's wrenched loose by Sharp. Trying to get it to a teammate. He finds Sasser. East Carolina, no field goals in over nine and a half minutes. Walker, he lost it. A steal. Osar coasting in. Can't end the drought. And a foul. It stays on this end. They don't give up any easy baskets. You have to work for everything that you get. That was a run out. That was a run out. Looked like it should have been an easy layup. Houston says no. He's challenged there. He's challenged there on the rebound. Cheney comes over the top and gets it. And I, I guess they get him for fouling Felton coming over his back. And Kelvin is saying, what did he push with when he had two hands on the ball? It's the and first on Cheney. Whenever you ask the officials that, they all walk away from you. <laughs> <laughs> They're over there at the scores table. You'd know a thing or two about that, huh? Uh, if he pushed, he got two hands on the ball. What did he push with? Felton is at the line for East Carolina. Struggling to put the ball in the basket. Yeah, we talked in the open. It was important for Felton to be able to score the ball. And he's had, he, he has been consistently able to do that. And that wasn't necessarily him going one-on-one, -on -one, but when he got looks, he had to take advantage of the looks he got. 
Hits them both. He's up to seven to lead East Carolina. And now you see Marks initiating the offense. I mean, they, they've got a lot of different pieces to this. Inside of a minute, Walker lost it. The Bouger with the steal. Here comes Felton. Quick rise three. Wide right. Walker up high to snatch it for Houston. Walker pulls the trigger on a three. Off the heel. Rebound sharp and a whistle. And a foul called on ECU. Now, Houston drills that every day. A shot goes up, crashing the offensive glass. They play two on two. They do a drill where they have a dummy guy shoot it, and you have to crash. But offensive rebounds is a major part of their game. They lead the American with 13 offensive rebounds per contest. Half second between game and shot clock. Down to 10 seconds before we break for intermission. Mark, a hoist. No. Rebound Walker. Kabunje, half court heave. Off the mark. And we head to the half with the number one team in the country leading East Carolina 36 to 19. How impressive has Houston been? I think they've been very impressive. Mentally, they're missing shots that they practice and makeable shots. Now, obviously, Houston and the intimidation factor, the energy, but still, East Carolina is running their offense and they're getting the looks that they wanted to get out of their offensive set. East Carolina did not have a field goal the last 10.56 of that first half. And they turn it over on their first possession of the second session. Felton takes it right back. Now, what you don't want to do is start turning the ball over to this Houston team because they're going to continue with the pressure. Johnson hits a three-lead three. And that's the way they started. I mean, those, that's what they practice. Johnson is a pick-and-pop big. He knocks down the three in the trail position. That ends the drought of over 11 minutes without a field goal on the other end. Jawan Roberts with the throwdown. What a great pass that time by Shaq. Again, they flatten their bigs out on the baseline, which allows the guards to get to the rim. If the bigs step up to try to stop them, then they just dump it down to the big. Felton's three off target. Walker faces, throws it up with the righty hook. Rebound tipped around, back to Walker. Houston resets, 15 to shoot. Down to eight on the timer. Roberts posted up on a clear out, and the lefty shot is good. Yeah, he's just too big, too strong down there. You gotta send somebody down to help him so Roberts will kick it out, especially He's going to have been on a hot, hot streak. Johnson's threes offline. Shed slashes. Extra pass. Walker tees for a three. Bottoms. <laughs> How about the ball movement from the Cougars? But that's what I'm talking about, this team. They look for each other. They've really been trying to set Walker up because he has not been as effective as he normally is. And they come 2008. In your eyes, does this Houston team look like a team that can win the title? Without question, number one, defensively, they're really good. Offensively, they don't turn it over and they get good shots every time. And they have a Hall of Fame guy coaching them. Kelvin Sampson has 225 wins at Houston. I'm going to tell you something about Coach Sampson. When he's sitting down in the beginning of the game, he's trying to figure out how this game will flow. When he starts to stand up, he's figured it out, and now he's directing his team on what they need to do to be successful that night.
His point guard picked up a foul and then got clobbered out high. And a foul called on ECU that'll give it back to the Cougars. Shed put so much pressure on you that you want to try to do something to get him off of you because he just disrupts uh, the stuff that you try to run. Sasser on the perimeter, went down with an apparent ankle injury in the first half, went to the locker room, re-entered, and has a game-high 13. Mark bumping, turning, and he's fouled a reach-in called on a Pirate. And again, the, one of the reasons why Houston's perimeter guys can get so deep is because they flatten out their bigs so a big man cannot come up to rotate, and they space the floor. And so both Sasser and Marks have the ability to shoot over top of them. What do you mean by flatten out your bigs? It's take them to the baseline. Okay. And, and a lot of times they operate underneath the basket. ECU with the block. Osar. Benjamin by Ayla has checked in for ECU, number five in the white uniform. No spot for a three at the top. Cleared by Mark underneath. Houston's going to run a set play right now. Pocket pass. Roberts. Bailed out by a whistle underneath. Much to the dismay of this home crowd, they'll call it on Johnson. And again, on that set play, what they do, Roberts comes up and sits a high ball screen. Shed comes off, and then he just rolls to the basket. If you don't switch, Shed he can either drive it. There you see Roberts roll, and they get him the ball, and he's fouled at the basket. Second foul issued to Brandon Johnson. Marcus posting up, pops out to retrieve it with 10 to shoot. Takes his man into the lane and puts it home. Tough shot from Tremont Mark, the mid-range savant. I, I tell you, they're good one-on-one -on -one players, and because they work in such a team concept, I think that gets lost to the average fans, how good one-on-one -on -one players the three perimeter guys are. And that's what East Carolina needs. They need somebody to step up and just knock down a makeable shot. Baela is capable of having big games. He scored 18 and went 6 for 8 from deep against Wichita State back on January 29th. He drills the 3, the 4th of the night for ECU. But they have only one two-point basket tonight. Roberts a hop step, and he feathers it in. Right now, Houston going to their big man game. By that, I mean they set ball screens and they're looking to roll their bigs and get them the ball in the paint. Johnson trying to carve out some space, bothered by bodies. Here come the Cougars. Roberts fouled on the way up by, by Ayla. James, you see, though, all day how Houston makes that extra pass. That's the thing that makes them so effective. These guys are... And the guy that he looked up to. There's his dad, John Willie Ned Sampson. Dad knows best because Kelvin has been a phenomenal coach at the collegiate level, second winningest coach in Houston history. He has six National Coach of the Year awards and just one of 16 coaches ever to take multiple schools to Final Fours. I went to his office when he was in Oklahoma and he had 85 pictures of his team and himself with his team in his office. I said, why do you have so many pictures? He said, you can always tell how close a family is by how many fortunes they have. And that's the type of program he built. A dunk from Osar. Just the second two-point field goal all night for the Pirates. Well, that time they were able to get some penetration. And with penetration comes easier shots. A couple of guys from those Oklahoma teams that Coach Sampson had are on the bench. As assistants, Quanis White and Paulus Price. East Carolina able to jar it loose. Here comes Felton. Ole defense by the Cougars, and he finishes. Coach Sampson won't be happy with that. Look for some subs to come in. Yeah. 
Yeah, he never takes his foot off the pedal. There's the excellence that goes along with this Houston team and program. Couple of bodies set to check in for Houston. Nine to shoot. Mark against Felton goes baseline with the way through. Can't squeeze it up and in. Two to shoot. Walker left alone. Out of bounds to ECU. We head to a timeout. And, and there you see great ball movement right there. Great move inside. Great finish right there. A foul down low. Beg your pardon. We're still here. Walker going to the line to shoot two for ECU. First trip to the foul line this half for East Carolina. Walker's been a young man that's really stepped up. He makes a lot of tough twos, can knock down wide open threes, but really likes to drive the basketball. Sunday afternoon on ESPN and the app. It's a women's basketball doubleheader as Olivia Miles and 10th ranked Notre Dame take on 20 and 9. Haley Van Lith and Louisville at noon Eastern. And then. Caitlin Clark in number six, Iowa. Host of McKenzie Holmes in number two, Indiana. That'll be a good one. Coverage begins at 11 a.m. with college game day. Walker splits the pair, the Iowa State transfer, who scored a career-high 24 points at Tulsa earlier this week. Tonight, that's his first tally. Shed throws it away, a rare blunder. Felton puts it on the deck. The gimme. I thought he had a he could have taken the easy shot right there. That could have got it down to 16 instead. Here comes Houston. Shed over the top. Knocked away and a steal. Houston able to recover. Fans want to walk. Shot clock did not reset. There's five to shoot. And a whistle and a pause in the action as they will take a look at the timer. Whenever Houston drives the ball, one of the bigs always go, if it's a driven from the baseline, one of the bigs always go to the front of the rim. They call that the dunk spot. So therefore, the driver had the chance to either lay it up or to kick it. They, they see it right there. The big went to the front of the rim and they try to kick it to him. Yeah. Shot clock never reset. Reset on that wild scrum. That's what Houston does to opponents. I mean, they really speed you up. They really do. And I I think this East Carolina team, I mean, I still think they're in a good position. I know that look at it, they're they're 18 down, but they haven't gotten away from how they want to play. As a coach, you look, is the team playing different than how they practice, what you thought, the way that they played in most of their games. East Carolina is playing offensively the way that they've normally played. They just haven't made some shots and some makeable shots. This is the first time in program history that East Carolina has hosted the number one team in the nation. They've won three of their last four games coming into this one. We touched on this during the open. They've exceeded expectations. They were preseason picked last in the American. And they're a half game back from seventh place, which is almost middle of the pack. Well, co Coach has done a really good job. He's used to building programs. He does a lot in developing players. He does a lot in communicating with players and creating a culture. You always hear Coach talk about culture, culture, culture. Culture is having your kids have an understanding of what you want to do, believing in what you want to do and how you want to do it. Okay. Okay. So they reset the shot clock to 27 because because of the change of possession, it should have gone all the way back to 30. Yes.
So nearly a full shot clock for the Cougars to operate with. They've started five for nine from the field in the second half. Shed almost lost it, nearly had his pocket picked. Soars in, teardrop, tip in from Francis. Whistle and a foul called on ECU. And Houston comes off the bench with one more athlete that gets on the glass. Francis is extremely tough on the offensive glass. That's what he does. He crashes hard. He's very physical. And he gives Houston another opportunity. Francis is fourth in the American with 38 blocks. That leads the team. He'd be starting for anybody else in the conference. Mark lets it fly. Rebound volleyed off the glass. Shed too unselfish. Ten to shoot. The pirate fell down. Houston has numbers. Francis gets it off the floor. The one-handed hammer. That was a Thor hammer. They have high expectations for him. He's going to be really important as you get into the tournament. Deflection. Osar. Up and under. Oh, tip in. Plus one. Again, but Osar created that by attacking the basket and creating the rotation so Felton could come in and finish at the rim. Watch this. This is just so impressive. Powers it up and finishes. There you see a drive right there by Ozark, and then Felton's able to come in and finish it up. Felton has a team high 11 points for ECU. His first miss at the strike tonight. He's now four for five. Houston has led wire to wire. Sharp, the freshman, attacks, has it blocked off the window. Walker's open for a three. That's a good looking break that time by East Carolina. James, I'm telling you, this is not over yet. Closest ECU's been in a while. It's down to 15. Shed double. Nine to shoot for the Cougars. Mark's jumper silences this home crowd. I get, but Houston never panics offensively. They have three guys that can make shots, that handle the basketball on the perimeter. Coach Sampson reminded us that Houston's had a lot more turnover than you might think in terms of their roster. A foul on the Cougars. Houston leads by 17. Team to execute their offense the way they normally run it. They're getting makeable shots. They just have to step up and make them. And that's where, that's where Houston challenges you a lot of times, too. Have to step up and make their free throws, too. This is a 69% free throw shooting team for the year. Prior to that make there from Felton, they were just 12 for 22. They're now 13 of 23. If you're going to go get the crown, you have to do everything right. Felton able to knock them both down. Back down to a 15-point spread. Now you see them. East Carolina extending their defense right now, trying to put some pressure. Coach Schwartz told us that they prefer to pick you up. Man to man, full court, 94 feet. Shed. Banks it through. Strong drive from the PG. He is so physically gifted. Kelvin said he got banged on that, which I think he did. And he's whistled for a foul on the open floor. That's his fourth personal foul. A costly one for Houston. He is so key to what they do, both offensively and defensively. 
How does ECU take advantage now with him on the bench? Well, I think it lessens some of the ball pressure on them. I think they can execute what they want to run even more. So I would stay with my set, set stop. Walker, he's mugged at the rim. Jaden Walker's been assertive here in this second half after a very quiet first half. He still he has just one field goal. But that's what you want to do. You want to attack him and try to get to the line. Now the key thing is they have to make their foul shots. Walker's a junior averaging 6.6 .6 points per game. He's seen a major uptick in his production since Javon Small went down with an injury. That's another thing that needs to be noted. He's out for the foreseeable future. Might have him back for the conference tournament, but he hasn't played since January 11th, and Javon Small was ECU's leading scorer at 16 a night. And that does leave a big hole offensively in what you're trying to do. I really look for Johnson now to step up along with Walker. There's a look at Javon Small, who had 23 points in the last game he played in, which was against Cincinnati, a big win for the Pirates. Mark. Francis gets it out of trouble. Sasso with Tim to shoot. is down low and an easy one for Roberts. This Houston team does not take the first good shot that they get. They take the shot that they want. And you can do that when you have three really good ball handlers on the floor. Nice find underneath Osar. Knocked away, out of bounds. It'll stay with the Pirates. Here's a look at that pass. Yeah, you see Marks, he sucks up the defense, gets the ball to Roberts, and is able to finish. But that's what they do. I mean, they get easy shots. And I talked earlier about them being unselfish, both offensively and defensively. Felton has Roberts on him. Swallowed up down low. And it caromed off of Felton. To stay on this end with ECU. Looked like the initial call it was going to head back down the other way. It is hard to get to the rim against Houston because they rim protect. They go straight up and you have to shoot over arms. Felton lets it fly. Francis skies for the rebound. Francis left alone down low. Misses the dunk, but he's fouled. Francis running the floor in the end. They do a good job of pushing the basketball again. But yeah, I think the guard play of Houston gets underrated because they they always get good shots and they normally get the shots that they want to get from the people that they want to take them. And that may sound really simple, but it's really a difficult thing to do. Francis can't hit the free throw. To an earlier point, Kelvin Sampson told us that they've lost. Houston has lost four starters off of the previous season's team. Five straight seasons, and they still are building and building, going to Final Fours and Elite Eights. Well, that's because the guys understand their role, and uh, coach is unrelentless as far as team and the understanding of team and how important team is. Freshman's had a nice night. He's got a close to a double double. But again, that's created by the penetration that East Carolina is getting right now from their perimeter guys, with Shed being on the bench. Shed saddled with four fouls. Roberts with seven to shoot against Osar. Turned away, shoots a fall away that's short, tipped right back to him. Sasser carving, spinning, and putting it in. Second shots. Houston's coming back to Walker right now. The pressure's just not the same when Shed's not in the game, though. It's good defense, but it's not in your face pressure. Osar. This 
this East Carolina team is growing up tonight. They're doing, they haven't panicked. They stayed within what they wanted to run. Coach has, has been positive with them. Tend to shoot for Marcus Sasser. Pull up. Yes. That's just a big time shot by a big time player. That is next level. Back to an 18 point lead for Houston. Osar. Oh, and again, East Carolina now playing with much more confidence offensively. Osar has West coming up here. 16 minutes on ESPN2, guys. All right, thanks, Kevin. You look at the difference between the first half and the second half. This guy here, Ezra Osar, has as many field goals in the last 90 seconds as the entire East Carolina team in the first 20 minutes. But I told you earlier, the opportunities were there. They just didn't take advantage of them, and now they're starting to. But this Houston team has played three games in six days. Coach Sampson is aware of that. The AC South on a great drive there. He's trying to rest guys and give guys some blows. But defensively, he wants them to step up and really play well. I think they've gone to a zone. It was funny, they worked on the other day, and Coach said, we really haven't played it that much. Best hanging on the rim. On the rim but he's hanging on the rim. It's going to go back to Houston. Yeah. If we see that zone again, how does East Carolina attack it? Well, first of all, it surprised them. <laughs> so I think, did. I think they've, they've got to try to get the ball inside. They have put somebody at the high post, hit the high post, and play off of that. But I think that that might have been just coming out of the timeout to give them a different look. Mark fouled. He's going to the line to shoot two. They're trying to get a goaltender on a call on this also. Foul is the seventh on East Carolina in this half. They're going to count the they count the bats one. Yeah. So two more awarded to Tremont Mark. He's up to 16. And the difference right now, Marks is really attacking, going hard to the basket. Got fouled, and they're saying once it hits the glass. It's, it's a goal 10 whether that the ball was above the basket or not. It's a freshman mistake from Ezra Osar because that was not going in you can See on the replay and Houston stays in the zone I'm sure this has to do with playing three games in six days Another dunk for Osar making a living underneath in the paint. I don't think they'll stay in that zone too much longer <laughs> Osar's up to 15 points and seven rebounds. The freshman from Atlanta. Coach Schwartz has brought in a talented crop of freshmen. He's got a nice class coming in next year for the Pirates. Sasser has it bothered with 10 to shoot. Mark Weaving. Step through. Off the heel. Tapped around. Walker will send it out high. Veteran play from the Houston freshman, Jarris Walker. Roberts has him pinned and he scores it. Roberts needed to do something because he was he gave up the layup on the last time they were in the zone. So they're going to try to zone one more time, I think. Roberts has a double-double with 15 points and 10 rebounds coming off a career-high 26 against Tulane. Down low, Johnson, offensive foul. Wipe off the layup, it goes back to Houston. Walker does a really good job moving his feet that time. They see him moving his feet. He's able to pick up the offensive foul. Coach Schwartz got teed up, but he's fighting for his team. I mean, they, there's been no quit in this East Carolina team. They've not taken a backward step. 
and they're growing. They're getting better. I think this game is making them better by them staying with what they do, executing what they have to do, and Coach is letting them know that he's fighting right there with them. There's a look at Michael Schwartz in his first season. East Carolina has not had an above 500 campaign since 2013. Here's why he got the tee. Yeah. yeah. This is a veteran crew. They're patient, but they don't take a lot of stuff. You know, they worked in the NCAA tournament. They also worked in the SEC where Coach Schwartz was an assistant at Tennessee. So this is not their first time seeing him. Sasser lost it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Cougars. Coach Sampson will probably wait till after the four-minute timeout to bring Shed back in the game. Shed's been on the bench with four fouls, but Houston's been just fine without him in terms of <laughs> continuing to build on their lead. This is a Houston program that's headed to the Big 12. Coach Sampson's old stomping grounds were at Oklahoma. He's familiar with the lead. What does this Houston team look like next year in the Big 12? How would this Houston team stack up this year in the Big 12? They would be they would be absolutely fine. Walker gives it up, a quick two for Roberts. The thing about Kelvin Sampson, he adapts. He's really smart. He's a basketball savant. He understands. They, he, he charts every practice. He can tell you exactly how many practices they had, how many minutes they've been on the floor, what they've been able to do, and so he would be fine in any league. I know right now he's not real happy with the zone. Walker gets a good look from the perimeter, and he drills it. Guys, 71-50, to 50, our score here at Houston on top. Largest crowd to witness an ECU game here at Williams Arena since December 22nd of 2008 against Wake Forest. What was going on in the ECU huddle? Well, he's telling his team, let's play for the last four minutes. We could see this team again in the tournament. Let's win the next four minutes. We played good basketball. Let's finish this off. And Coach Sampson comes out with a set play. Another slam from the Cougars. They push their lead to 23. They've led wire to wire. East Carolina had it down to 15 on multiple trips about midway through this second half. A kick, it'll stay on this end. And it's obvious right now Coach Sampson is really working on this zone, figuring he may need, to, he may need this in either the conference tournament or the NCAA tournament. Jamal Shedd has re-entered the lineup for Houston. Their star point guard who's only played 21 minutes tonight. He's been bothered by foul trouble. Johnson locked and low. His three is on buckets. East Carolina done a really good job handling it. Coach Sampson is not happy with the rotation. Now, you know, Coach, I'm, I'm not going to let you off the hook with absolutely fine. Houston in the Big 12 this year. That's what you said. What is absolutely fine? Is that top three in the Big 12? Could they be a Big 12 champion if they were in the league this year? They, Coach Sampson's been a champion every place he's been, so certainly that, but even more so, you know, it, they're number one in the country, so they can play against anybody, any place. Osar on the move, scoops to Walker. Bunge throws it up. Barely drew iron. The rebounding tonight, 45 to 26 in favor of Houston. You know, one of the things Walker, I don't think, has had the numbers that he's had in some of the other games. When you're a freshman and you play that many games in a short period of time, mentally and physically it can wear on you a little bit. And they really need him to step up. Satcher is doing what he does right now. He's the closer on this Houston team. Late in the game, they put the ball in his hands and he makes the right decisions. Sasser has his fifth straight 20-plus point game and a block down low on this end. Sasser and Mark have combined for 42 of Houston's 76. The AAC is on ESPN Plus, and these are our featured upcoming matchups for the Cougars and the Pirates. 
the Houston women host Wichita State Wednesday at 8 Eastern, and the Pirates take on Tulane Friday night at 7. Plus, every game except the championship game of the American Women's Basketball Tournament is on ESPN+, Plus, and that begins March 6th. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC or download the ESPN app. And don't think Houston wasn't worried about this basketball game. I know I talked to Coach Sampton earlier. He's got a lot of his classmates and old classmates sitting behind the bench. And he told his wife, don't bring anybody by the hotel before the game. And so he was really focusing on this. Shot clock violation forced by the ECU defense. As a coach, you don't take any game for granted. They're all important. But this crowd came ready to cheer and to push East Carolina for a victory. Houston did a really good job of taking them out of the game. Johnson down low in the lane and a whistle and a foul on Houston. You and I were talking at shoot around about some of your coaching stops. You had a really good Miami team in the early 2000s back in 02. You were a five seed in the NCAA tournament. But you got a terrible draw. <laughs> Missouri, the best 12 seed maybe ever. Ever. Kareem ever. Rush and the Tigers. Ever. And we went to Albuquerque and we had to play at 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's like a 5 o'clock wake up. <laughs> Was not a good trip. Coming up at 10 Eastern on ESPN, number 15 St. Mary's takes on number 12 Gonzaga for the WCC regular season title. That'll be at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. But how much of the NCAA tournament is about matchups? Oh, so much of it is. And a style of play, and that's the thing that makes it so interesting and allows you to have success and. You know, sleepers advancing a lot of it just has to do with seeing teams that you're not used to seeing when we were at Tulane and we had the posse and we seeing teams that you're not used to seeing when we were at Tulane and we had the posse and we pressed for 40 minutes a lot of teams did not see that your old Kansas State team we were able to upset them uh, in Orlando just because they hadn't seen that style and we blew them out in overtime by two I mean so it, it, it's it's a fun time of the year. Yeah, I told you earlier today that you broke eight-year-old James <laughs> Wesling's heart when you took down the Kansas State Wildcats in 1993 at Tulane. Tulane was an 11 seed, K-State a six. That was a core memory for me, Coach. <laughs> Walker down low to Osar. Under a minute left. Houston will move to 27 and two. East Carolina has their sixth three of this second half. Quentin DeBouge knocks that one down. I think Houston will be happy to get back home with a win here and start really getting a, getting a little rest at the end of the season. Stanford Steve and SVP, they love it. Great crowd on deck here tonight. Houston looks like the number one team in the land. Freshman throws it away. Sharp with the turnover. Baela's three pops out. Houston 76, East Carolina 57. A good win for Houston. Every place they walk into, they want to see the number one team, want to beat them, and they have to be ready to play. They got a good win here tonight.